How is everybody? Nice and sunny. It's good weather today. I went for a cricket yesterday with my son. It was fun. And you know, it's um, uh, it's, it's it's very rare in UK to get sun like that that early actually. Uh, I guess Alhamdulillah, it's, it's it's going very well. Um, so it's a very nice weather. I hope the summer will return now, and then we can have some fun. Um, the families go out and do some stuff, uh, picnics and barbecues. So prepare for that. And inshallah, I hope that you had a nice Saturday like yesterday as well. So I went out with my son uh, outside and uh, we played cricket. Um, so it was it was fun. So we we usually we usually go outside when it's it's a good weather to play something. My son loves cricket as well. Good. Um, so uh, welcome back to the class. Um, so hopefully hopefully you were there yesterday and you got you got to hear the lecture and listen to the lecture and also got some good ideas about how uh, each family works. But we also discussed some insightful um, elements in that lecture in terms of motivating ourselves. I mentioned about the Surah Bakra, the Bil Ghaib part, and I also gave you some examples from Surah al Fatar, where Allah like is saying that there are Hafizin, there are watchers on you, who are watching you, and they are Kiram and Kaltibin, so they know down everything very nobly, and um, they know what you do. So we did some motivational talk as well yesterday. Um, just wanted to give you um, a, a flavor of how Allah talks about the pursuit Allah is after, inshallah. Um, please go seek advice and uh, read the Farsi from the real ulama. I'm not, I'm not qualified to give you a detailed tafsir of, of the Quran. Um, so I, I, what I presented to you was my, my view and understanding that I've learned from different places. But, but please go and and learn more about these things. Um, so from the real scholars of our times, and uh, I think there there are excellent and brilliant minds out there that that I don't even come close to. So I, I'm no one literally. So please don't quote me on these things and don't rely on what I just say. Just go and investigate. Do your own investigations, and this is a responsibility for every one of us. So my job is just to tell you what I know and uh, what my knowledge is. And I just want to transfer that to you. And inshallah, then all of us together can go forward and cash on that and a bit build a bit more on that together. So inshallah, um, today uh, we will start a new family as we usually do. So we have done family two to family seven. Uh, family seven was pretty easy. Uh, we'll do a quick review as always. And we will also... Um, We'll also um, start the family eight. Uh, we're quite close, so eight fam family eight, and then there's family nine and family 10 during the next weekend, hopefully. And then the weekend after, we will do family one. And uh, for the family one, we will go back and we'll just also learn to use the dictionaries because dictionaries are going to be very important for us because what we have learned so far is surf, what patterns they follow, what each family, um, how each family is different from one fa other, other, the other family, how the construction patterns look like, with the same root letters, a word is constructed differently in one family uh, and differently in the other family. But what we, what we have not done is, uh, if I put, a, uh, if there's an allama and there's the allama, if there's an allama coming from the family two with a shadda in the middle, and there is the allama coming from family five with a shadda in the middle and ta, an extra ta in the beginning, and there is alama, alima or alama coming um, from family which is something different from two and five, which is family one. How does the meaning change? What is the implication? What is the difference between allama and the allama? Allama and the Allama. Yeah? What is the difference between that? So that implication is something we have not done. We have just done the patterns. We've done the patterns. We've not touched really comprehensively. Off and on, we have discussed a few things, but 
but we have not really touched comprehensively on the implication. And when you start to use the dictionaries, you would realize the implication is effectively the change of the meaning. So the ulama um, would give you one meaning, and when you check in the family five, it would give you a different meaning. So uh, effectively, the fact of the surah also changes. The implication of the surah also changes. So that's why it's diff it's easy. It's it's important to understand how these families uh, are used in the Quran. Um, there are implications, and implications of such families in itself is a very very big topic, um, to which we cannot cover completely in this course. Um, but just uh, as far as you know how to use the dictionaries, inshallah, in days to come, you will be able to decode the meaning. No, these are the root letters. You go and find a family in the dictionary. And you, you, you know these are the root letters. You know this is the family this word belongs to. And you go and you find it and look it up in the dictionary against that family. And then you, you know, okay, in this family, this means such and such. But if it was a different family, it would mean such and such. Okay? So um, that's where we are going, inshallah. Um, and... Um, and inshallah, I hope that every will, everything will come together um, and, and your learnings and your, your efforts, your pursuit um, are absolutely watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the deployment of Kiram al Kativin on you. And inshallah, they know what you do. They know what you do and, and they will inshallah help you. Allah will inshallah help you to them or anyone else. It's up to Allah, inshallah, uh, just keep on, keep on moving forward. Don't give up. Just don't give up. Just keep on, keep on moving forward. Give the pursuit, keep the pursuit alive. And Ramadan is coming. And Ramadan should, should be even more. So you should be more motivated, inshallah. Okay, should be more motivated, inshallah. Good. So uh, I will share my screen with you. As always, I have my phone in front of me, and also I have my. WhatsApp in front of me. If you have questions, you know where to put those questions. WhatsApp. Okay. So you can put your questions on the WhatsApp and I will be able to answer them hopefully to the best of my ability. If I can't answer them, I'll tell you I can't answer them and I'll try to find those answers for you um, and probably give you later on in some other class. Um, and um, it's, I will also share my screen with you now. Um, and I want to show you some change that we have done in terms of how we share notes with you. I've written you an email, but I'll quickly show you how you, you can access them, and then we'll kick off the class, inshallah. Okay, good. So let me share my screen with you. Um, so the screen is going to be shared now. So you should be able to see very soon. And I will find that out as soon as it shows up on my mobile phone. Because I usually listen to my own lecture when I'm teaching you guys, which is weird. But anyway, that's that's necessary. Good. So I hope you can see the screen now. And what you see on the screen is is our website, Al Bayan website. So what we have done is I, we used to send the class notes to you <clears throat> via emails. So we have changed it. Uh, now and made it a bit more accessible for everyone and uh, for us as well as for yourselves um, so we don't have to send emails around and you don't have to keep track of which document was in which email and and maintain them so what we have done we have created this updated this page which is called recordings and notes it was previously just called recordings so as uh, just like you do normally go to watch the recordings just go here and you will find you will find a dedicated note here your class notes and you can download the notes directly from here okay instead of worrying about your email search and stuff like that you don't have to dig them out in your emails so just so you know these are class notes <clears throat> these are class notes what are class notes class notes are the notes that i make here for example, when I'm teaching, okay? So I open a Word document and I make all those class notes. I produce them in the class. These are class notes. And these are the notes that are made available here. 
there are other notes, there are lecture notes or course notes that we do send you for your records. For example, we sent you the surf charts. For example, we sent you the Bayana notes in the past. <clears throat> so those are the notes which are lecture notes, class, not the class notes. These are the notes uh, <clears throat> that may still be separately sent to you un until you're ready to offer them online like this. Uh, today, we, we can offer them uh, uh, to, uh, we can offer the class notes to you online here. Okay, so if you go here, uh, these class notes will be available, especially for all the online courses. The courses that are done online and produced notes produced online, they should be available here uh, without problems. If if you're, you're one of the off-site student on-site students, um, and, and then you en enroll in on-site class, then probably it's best to take advice from your teacher from your instructor, how, how the class notes are shared. Um, so we can only make class notes available here if they're digital, if they're electronically made available to us. Um, so um, if they're not made available to us, we can't make it available here. So for online, then normally by default, digital and electronic, so we can make it available. Good, and just before I show you, uh, this is a shared drive and it's publicly accessible by anyone, anyone through this page. It means even the students who are not taking Alban courses can access these class notes. So we want to make it available <clears throat> to anyone because that helps people to understand what type of courses we do, what type of study we do in Albayan, and then probably uh, they may decide, uh, make an informed decision if they want to come and join our courses and, and learn more about, about the language of the Quran and Quran and so on. So we have, uh, we have made them available online here publicly. Okay, uh, so now, what, when you want your class notes, when are your classes are over, your notes are going to be available through this link. So just go here, say download class notes. It will open a website, uh, which is a Google Drive effectively. You can change the view here and you can go in your course. Your course is Quran, Quranic Arabic 2. Okay? You just go in your Quranic Arabic 2 and then you find the month where your course was started. Your course was started in February 2018. This is your batch. And you'll find my name as your teacher here. So you know which course you're looking at. You can download the entire folder if you want to, but uh, you can just go inside and say, okay, I want to I wanna take, take a look at the last class. So everything we have done in the class is now available here. So all the class notes are available here at one place. So you can sort them out and you'll get the latest one. So this is the notes from yesterday. So I can click on it and it opens right here in front of me. <clears throat> and it opens right here in front of me. And I hope you remember, this is what we did yesterday. All of these notes are now very easily available to you in the palm of your hand. You can install a Google Drive app and uh, on your phone, and you will be able to access these notes everywhere, uh, not, just, not just on your laptop. So on, when you're on the move, you can revise when you're on when you're lying on your bed, uh, just relaxing, you can revise. So it's it's available everywhere to you, inshallah. Okay, so uh, you can you can also download them from this link. Okay, just say download and we'll save it on your machine. Okay. So that's what we have done, uh, just to facilitate everyone. Not just only that, you will have access to other notes. For example, Quranic Arabic 1. So there are two Quranic Arabic 1 courses that we have conducted so far. The first one was in May 2017, and the second one was October 2017. So <clears throat> you have access to all of this. Although you're students of Quranic Arabic 2, and you may not be students of, for example, May 2017 batch, but you can always go and see, okay, what notes other classes have done on certain topics, okay? You can open those notes, and you can see, okay, oh, this is conditional statements, and that's how they have produced the conditional statements. And you can learn about that. You can read their notes as well. It's more more accessible to you. <clears throat> Things are more accessible to you now. <clears throat> You're not restricted to the content of your class only, but also cl other classes. Um, so you can have a good view of of what's being taught, and and you have good more places to go to and understand um, and, and understand how it's being taught. So you have a more opportunity to improve your learning, inshallah. So this is another. Quranic Arabic one that I taught last year, 
2017. These are the notes. All of those notes are available. If you're a Quranic Arabic 2 student or you were a student of this course, everything is here so you can access. Okay. So I hope this is something that will help you. So just go here and say download class notes and you should be able to uh, view this. There is no access permissions to this. This is publicly available through this page. Okay. You won't find it when you Google search it, but you have to come here and click here. Okay. So I have made this link available as well through this page. Just say notes. If you say notes, it will directly take you here. But I, I won't recommend you to use this link too often because it may be removed later on. So it's just temporary placeholder at the moment. Okay. Good. Alhamdulillah. So I hope I hope you will you will benefit from this. So let's let's go back to the class. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So what we want to do, what we want to do, we want to continue with our such studies. So what we have done so far. So we always start what we have done so far. So let's take a quick review of the family seven. Let's take a very, very quick review of the family seven. Okay. So um, family seven, review of the family seven. Review of the family seven. Okay. Let's take this review. Okay. Now what we did <clears throat> in family seven, the family seven had some indications. Okay, so family seven had some indications. The first indication was that the past tense started with an extra what? An extra, an extra. Started with in. Hold on, in. in. Okay, so past tense started with in. That's what we did. Past ten started with in, and this in was extra in, of course. It's not part of the root letters, it's an extra. With an extra in, an extra in. That's what we did. The past ten started with an extra in. <clears throat> and we did an example of a of a word, a thing which was it was I think it was it was in kalaba. It was the word we the word we chose yesterday was in Kalaba. Yes, this is what we did. In Kalaba. In. I keep on making a mud. In Kalaba. In Kalaba. Yan Kalibu. Yan Kalibu. In Kalaba, Yen Kalibu. Okay, so that was what we did. In Kalaba, Yen Kalibu. And then we said the family seven has no passives. It has no passives. It has no passives. Therefore, therefore, what's missing? Therefore, therefore, they are, there is no, it's some. Maf'ul is no, it's a maf'ul. It's a maf'ul. It is no, it's a maf'ul. Okay? It has no passives and therefore there is no, it's a maf'ul. Okay? That last time as well, yesterday. And then we said the master, the master takes the in fi alan form. In fi alan. In fi alan form. In fi alan pattern. In fi alan pattern. That's what we said. Family seven. The past tense starts. Starts. With an extra in. In Kalaba, Yan Kalibu. No, Yan Kalibu is present, as you know. It has no passives, therefore, there is no Ism Maf'ul. Okay? And the Mazdar takes In Fi'alan pattern. The Mazdar takes In Fi'alan pattern. Okay? And then we did 
<clears throat> then we could do a surf survey chart quickly. Okay, then we could do a surf survey chart. Okay, let me just quickly put it here. The table. The table is here. Quick adjustments of the table. We make it centered aligned. Okay, center the line, we've merged the last two boxes. Okay, merge cells, we will also merge the middle boxes because we don't have passive here, okay? So we have the full right farmer. And let's take the routes that we took last time, okay? So which routes did we take last time? We took um, root letters. We took the root letters Baf, Lam, and Ba. Okay, Baf, Lam, and Ba. Let's construct it very quickly. Okay, let's construct it very quickly, keeping the uh, keeping the uh, three points in mind. Okay, keeping all the three points in mind. Okay. Okay. So uh, in Kalaba. In Kalaba, Yan Kalibu. In Kalaba, Yan Kalibu. In Kilaban. In Kilaban. Yan Kalaba, Yan Kalibu. In Kilaban. Wrong Harka. Oops. Okay. In Kilaban. In Kalaba, Yan Kalibu, in Kilaban. Mun Kalibun. Mun Kalibun. Everyone sees that? Mun Kalibun. So Mun Kalibun is easily derived from Yan Kalibu. Okay, you can replace the ya, put a meme with the dhamma on it, and then you make it heavy, just like we did in the past. Okay, in kalaba, yan kalibu, in kilaban, mun kalibun. Okay, and then in the middle, passives does not exist. Okay, passives does not exist, therefore, there's nothing here. There's no passive here, and there's no ism of all here. Okay, and then we constructed the command. Then we constructed the command. What was the command? What was the command? In Kalib. Everyone sees that? In Kalib. In Kalib. You remember how we constructed the command? Do you want me to construct the command? Let's quickly do this. Just to make sure. Command for... Yen Kalibu or Yen Kalibu. So you first change Yen Kalibu to second person, it becomes Tan Kalibu. Okay, let me just, uh, yeah, Yen Kalibu, you have Yen Kalibu, right? You have Yan Kalibu and you change it to Tan Kalibu. Tan Kalibu. Tan Kalibu, then you make it lighter so it becomes Tan Kalib. Tan Kalib. You make it lighter, then you remove the Ta. It becomes Noon Kalib. Because you can't read the Noon here because there's a Sakun. Sakun in the beginning because there's a sakun in the beginning you give it a helper alif you give it a helper alif okay you give it a helper alif because you gave it a helper alif now you need to find the haraka of the helper alif and you went to the hua version and you found the second to last root le letter second to last root le uh, second to last letter and you let's take a look at the haraka and because it's a kasra because it's a kasra the, this helper alif will get a kasra if it was a dhamma it would get a dhamma but 
even if it was a fatha, it will still get a kasra in the command because we give kasra if it is not dhamma. If the second to last letter is dhamma, only then we give dhamma. Otherwise, we give kasra regardless whatever haraka is there, kasra or fatha. Okay? So that's what that's how we came to the in kalib, the command. And then we have the forbidding la tan kalib, which is easy because if tan kalib. We just take this form, the second person form like this. Okay. And then we went to the Ism Zarf. And we went to the Ism Zarf and we said, okay, because there are no passives, we can't have Ism of Ul. And we used to we used to know that Ism Zarf is same as Ism of Ul. But now that we don't have Ism of Ul, we can use the Ism file to derive the Zarf. We can just change the Haraka from Kasra to the Fatha. We say Mun Kalab, Mun Kalabun, Mun Kalabun, Mun Kalabun. So we said the difference is this. We said this is the difference between the two, okay? The Kasra and the Okay. We also did the difference. For example, uh, take a look at this. These two words. Take a look at these two words. In kalaba and in kalib. Okay. No. In fact, not this one. So let me let me make a different example. So we said that you have to be careful. When you when you decode it and when you decode it and compare the command with the past tense, okay. So, we, so something something that we can call command versus the past tense. This is also what we did. This is also what we did, and what I mean by that is. So if you take yen kalibu and you make, let's say, um, and you make um, um, uh, a home version for it, if you make a home version for it, so let me move down so I can I can do it a bit more with freedom. Okay. So if you just make a home version for it, you say yen um, kalibu na, yes, yen kalibu na. Yen Kalibuna. And then the command for Yen Kalibuna would be in Kalibu. I'm not going through the entire command process here, okay? Because I assume that you understand it. Okay? In Kalibu. In Kalibu. Okay, and then you can take the past tense of the same root letters in kal in kalaba, for example, in kalaba is the past tense. Then you can make a ho home form of the past tense as well. Okay, in kalaba, in kalaba, in kalabu, in kalabu, in kalabu. Okay. So you can make the past tense. So this is the first one was Fi'al Mudare Fi'al Mudare Hum. Okay. And the second one is Fi'al Mazi Hum. Okay. And we said there's a subtle difference. Look at this in Kalibu and in Kalabu. In Kalibu and in Kalabu, the command and the past tense looks very similar. They look very similar, and the only difference is the haraka on the middle letter. Okay, the only difference is the haraka on the middle letter. So be careful about this when you're decoding it in the Quran. So you want to know if it is a past tense or if it's a command. Completely changes the meaning. Okay. So in the past tense, you would usually have a fatha. In the command, you would usually have, have a kasra. OK? 
Okay, it's a good indication to decode that this is a command. We did that yesterday. Okay, and then we did some practice as well. I hope it gave you a good overview. This 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 today's session so far, it gave you a good overview of of what we did in the family seven. It's pretty easy family, not really too difficult. Okay, and we will summarize them inshallah. As we also did yesterday from family two to seven, two to six, and then we did the set seven. For now, let's jump to the family eight. If you have difficulty and if you're not getting used to this, what do you need to do? You know that. You can go back to the recordings, listen to the recordings, and if you have any questions, you can, of course, put them on WhatsApp and someone will be able to answer those questions for you. Okay? So there's a big community. I would really encourage you to make use of the, those WhatsApp, uh, that WhatsApp group, because what we want to do is build a community where we learn the language of the Quran together. It's not a one-man show. Uh, we need to learn it together. So let's learn it together. Become part of that WhatsApp group. If you don't have a link, if you want to become part of that WhatsApp group, please become part of the WhatsApp group. Uh, write us an email. We'll send you a link, and you can you can join the WhatsApp group. Okay, but uh, this is something you would you 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 should be making use of. Okay, and inshallah, it will only help you. Good. Let's move on to the let's move on to the topic for today, which is family eight. It's family eight. So I'm going to do family eight. Now, let's start with the family eight. Family eight is an interesting family as well. Okay? So let me give you some indicators of family eight first. Okay? Family eight. So what does family eight give you? What, what is, how is it different from, from the family seven or any other family? So family eight, past tense, also begins with an alif, okay? It also begins with an alif, okay? Keep that in mind. Past tense starts with an alif, with a kasra. Past tense, oops, your change required. Past tense starts with an e. Okay? Past tense starts with an E. I live with a castle. Okay? That's how the past tense starts. Okay? Now, after the first root letter, family 8 introduces a ta. Listen to me again. After the first root letter, the family 8 introduces an extra ta. Okay? Okay? Introduces an extra ta. after the first root letter. Okay. It introduces an extra fa after the first root letter. The alif from the beginning and the ta here, they both are separated. They are separated, they're not together. It's not like the in of family one, seven. In family seven, this in, alif and noon, they came together. They came together, yeah? They came together here but in in family eight in family eight they don't come together they're separated there is a root letter in the middle in between them okay it's an it's an alif and it's a ta in the case of family eight it's an alif and it's a ta but they are separated they're not together okay just keep that in mind okay just keep that in mind so the first point is that the family eight introduces starts with a alif just like just like the family seven did okay just like the family seven did and it introduces an extra tha after the first root letter okay and they both are separated now master oops, again the master takes the if the Raban form, if if the Arlen form, if the Arlen form, if the Arlen 
is the island form. The mustard takes the if the island pattern. If the island pattern. Okay? The mustard takes the if the island pattern. All right? Just remember these things, these three things, inshallah. Okay? It starts with an alif with a kasra. Then there is a first root letter. And then there is an extra tha after the first root letter. The Mazda takes if the Arlen pattern. Okay? Let's go and construct the table and it will become clear, inshallah. So I'll move everything on the second page, next page so we have a cleaner page. Okay? Let's construct it here. The root letters, root letters, which one should I take? I'll take Qaf, Qaf, Ra, and Ba. This is usually also called sometimes Iqtara Ba family. So it will help you remember as well. Okay? So in this case, what we'll do, we'll just build a family chart. self sahir chart. self sahir chart. Okay? What's happening? Why can't you just align middle? Good. Okay, good. So let's let's make use of the Qaf, Ra, and Ba and build this chart. So it starts with an alif, we know, with a kasra. Okay? That's what I said. Start with an alif, with a kasra. And then there is a first root letter, which is Qaf. Then, which is Qaf. Yep. And then it introduces an extra ta. It introduces an extra ta after the first root letter. Okay? There is a fatha everywhere, okay? But not on the calf. There is a sukun on the calf. Okay? So you see the first alif and the second ta. They are not belonging to this to the root letter. They don't belong to the root letters. They are separate. They are different. They're coming from the family, come from the self pattern. They can't, don't come from the root letter. It's not them down. It's of Ra, and Ba, which are the root letters. When they come together in family eight, it becomes Iqtaraba. Iqtaraba. Iqtaraba Yaqtaribu. Iqtaraba Yaqtaribu. Iqtaraba Yaqtaribu. Okay? Now, as always, that you have seen in the previous families as well, Alif gets replaced with a Ya, and the Ta remains. Alif gets replaced with a Ya, and the Ta remains, because the present tense has to start with a Ya, okay? So this Ta is not from the root letters. This Ta is coming from the family. Iqtaraba yaktaribu. Iqtaraba yaktaribu. Iqtaraba yaktaribu. Iqtaraba yaktaribu. Okay? You see the pattern? It's very, very logical. As, as soon as you know these tips, you immediately can construct with any root letter, inshallah. Because you know I need to start with an alif, then there's a first root letter, and then there's a ta. And, it's all, and we're talking about the past tense. And as soon as you jump into the present tense, you know it starts with a ya, so alif has to go. But the ta will remain. But the ta will remain. Okay. Now the master takes if the alan pattern. So let's construct that. If starting with alif, instead of a fa, we have a qaf. Instead of if, we have ik. Then we have a ta. If the, then we have ikti, then we have ikti, then we have ain, ah, ah, here we have raw, here we have raw, ikti raw, ikti raw, okay, then we have lan, if the ah lan, then we have ban here, okay, ikti raw ban, you see that, you see the formation, see the formation. You still have that pattern here. You have this alif here, 
you have the thaw here. You have the thaw here. Okay. In the master, ikti raban. Ikta raba yakta ribu ikti raban. Ikta raba yakta ribu ikti raban. Okay. Ikta raba yakta ribu ikti raban. If you have done this, you can produce the remaining chart. You should be able to produce the remaining chart. There is no significant exception here. There is no exception as such in this family uh, for the root letters we're working. So I'm going to show you a special case for some of the root letters. But for this one, for this particular chart and the root letters that you have, um, you don't have as such any exception. You don't have an exception here. Okay, so you should be able to produce is some file based on the present tense format. Based on the present tense format. So if it is yaktaribu, you can replace the ya with the mean. You can replace the ya with the mean, and then you write everything like that. Mokutari, mokutari. And you make it heavy. Mokutari bun. Mokutari bun. Mokutari bun. Okay. Iktaraba yaktaribu iktiraban mokutari bun. Iktaraba yaktaribu iktiraban mokutari bun. Okay. Is that clear? Take a few seconds. Take a few seconds to. To, to just get hold of this. Okay, it's important. It's important. Take your time. It's fine. I'll give you about 30 seconds or so to just get hold of this. All right. Okay. So you see the derivation of the of the ISO file based on the present tense is pretty straightforward. Okay. And the pattern that I've shown you is very very logical as well. It's very very mathematical as well. Okay. So there's a there's a pattern to it. Once you know the tips, it starts with an alif with a kasra, and then there's an extra ta after the first root letter. Then I can give you any root letters. You can construct it yourself. You can construct it yourself, inshallah. Now let's do the passive. This family does have passive. You don't get lucky like family seven all the time. This family does have passives. Okay. Great. So let's make the passive. So how would you make a passive in a past tense? What is the sound? Is it a longer fatha sound in the beginning? Or is it a longer u sound in the beginning? Is it a longer fatha sound, a sound, or a longer u sound? What is it? <clears throat> it is a longer u sound. So you have u, then you have kaf with the sukun, uk, and then you have another letter, ta. What haraka should it take? What haraka should it take? Because in the past tense passive, there is one kasra, there is one kasra before the ending. There is one kasra before the ending that indicates it's a past passive. And there is a longer u sound. Alif has a dhamma. Qaf has a sukun as part of this family. What haraka a ta can take? Is it going to be a fatha, dhamma, or a kasra? It is going to be a dhamma. Is it, going, it is going to be a dhamma. O kutu. And the reason it is going to be a Dhamma and not a Kasra because this is not the letter which is before the last one. Okay? Okuturiba. Okuturiba. You see? Okuturiba. Ra gets the Kasra. Ra gets the Kasra. You have a longer U sound until you hit the second last letter and then you put a Kasra. Then you put a Kasra. You have a longer U sound, and then you put a kasra on the ra. Okay? 
when you put a kasra on the ra. You see here? Uk tu riba. Uk tu riba. Uk tu riba. Okay? That's the passive. That's the passive. Uk tu riba. Uk tu riba. Now let's go to the present tense. How oh, is it the longer O sound? Is it a longer O sound? We know it starts with the O, so it's gonna be U, <clears throat> and we know there is a there is a calf which has a sukun. Okay, it, uh, we know it's gonna be yuk, yuk. But what is the how how would I differentiate it from the present tense? So in the present tense, passive, it starts with a smaller O sound and a continuous and a longer A sound. Longer fatha sound. Yuk taraba. Yuk tarabu. Ending doesn't change. Not taraba. Ending endings does not change. Yuk tarabu. Yuk tarabu. So the ra will get a fatha. Okay. Uk turiba. Yuk tarabu. Uk turiba. Yuk tarabu. Okay. Okay. Then the mother Ekpiraban. Ekpiraban. Okay. Ekpiraban. Ekpiraba, Yakutaribu, Ekpiraban, Mokutaribun. Okuturiba, Yokutarabu, Ekpiraban. And now the ism maf'ul. Now the ism maf'ul. How do we derive the ism maf'ul? We derive it from the present tense passive. We derive it from the present tense passive. How do we derive it from the present tense passive? We replace the ya with the meme. We replace the ya with the meme. There is a dhamma in passive anyway. Then we make it heavy. That's it. Mokutarabun. 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 Okay. Mokutarabun. Okuturiba yukutarabu ekpiraban mukutarabun. Okay. Now the command. Now the command. Shall we construct the command? Let's construct the command. You are going to become command experts, inshallah. <laughs> command for yakutaribu. Okay. Yakutaribu. Yakutaribu. Okay. What we have, we have a yakutaribu. Yakutaribu. What am I doing? I'm not looking at the screen and I'm typing with an English keyboard. Sorry about that. Yakutaribu. Yakutaribu. Okay. Now, yakutaribu changes into the second person, becomes takutaribu. Taktaribu. Taktaribu becomes lightest. Becomes taktarib. Oops, taktarib. Then we remove the ta. It becomes kaf tarib. We can't read it, so we give it a helper alif. Alif kaf tarib. I want to know the. I want to know the. Um, haraka on the alif. What haraka should go on the alif? We go back to the hua form and we see the second to last root letter. We see the second to last letter here. Okay? Second to last letter. And we say it's a kasra. If it's a kasra, what should we give the alif? We give it a kasra. Because anything other than dhamma ends up in a kasra here. Okay? Ikhtarib. Ikhtarib. So the command is going to be ikhtarib. 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 
equal to it. And then you have the forwarding. Forwarding, you know, you take the second person license, which is Pakhtarib. La Pakhtarib. La Pakhtarib. And the Zarf looks exactly the same as Isam Maf'ul, which is going to be Muhtarabun. Okay? Not really a big deal, isn't it? It's 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 almost the same thing that we have been doing since the beginning of the course when we started the surf. So that's that's family eight. Okay, so you you understand the indicators of family eight. You understand the indicators of the family eight. Okay. Good. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Take your time. Take your time. Understand it. Read it. Do some girdan. Without that, it's not going to be. It's not going to be. It's not going to come quick. It will take its time. Okay. It will take its time. That's fine. It's it's going to take its time. Okay. So let's construct another one. Let's construct another one. Okay, uh, let's construct this chart again. Okay, I'm going to remove one of this. Okay, let's start here. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. Da, ba, ein, ein. Okay, I'm going to take da, ba, ein, ein. So we start with Aleph. And we have the first root letter, which is a ta. And the first root letter, we have a sukun. Just like we have it, taraba, we have it. And then there is a second root letter, which is a ta, which is coming from the family. Just like it, ta, we had in the past. In with it, taraba, we have it, ta. It, ta. Okay. And then we have ba'a. It, ta, ba'a. Now, now look at this. So there are two thas coming together. The two thas coming together. And when you read them, when you read them, itta, you read them itta. Okay? When you read them itta, what sound are you producing? You are aren't you producing a sound as if there was a shadda? As if there was a shadda. Ittaba. 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 Is there any other way to read it? It. You producing a sound of a ta two times, and that's what you do when you have a shadda like allama yaitafarraka. Then you put the put the shadda on it. You produce that sound two times. So in this family, when two ta's come together, when two ta's come together, you change it to the sing to a single ta with a shadda on it. Okay, you would write it like this. Ittaba'a. Ittaba. Okay, you would write it like this. You would write it like this. So these two thas, these two thas, will change to a single ta with a shadda because effectively you're producing the same sound, isn't it? You're producing the same sound. You're producing the same sound. It taba'a becomes it taba'a. Okay. You merge them together. It's fine to write it like that as well, but uh, but but this this form is not this form is not uh, usually you will find you'll find this this form the one on the on the left hand side. This is the form you will find uh, most of the times in the Quran. You would not find the other form. Okay. So 
You get W. Same as the case with present tense. So you just bring the two thoughts together. You bring the two thoughts together. Yet W. It tabaa yet tabiu. It tabaa yet tabiu. And then same case here. It was ikatiraban. You become, you make it ittibaan. Ittibaan. Okay? Ittibaan. Okay? Ittibaan. Ittabaa yet tabiu. Ittibaan. And then you can derive the uh, ISO file very easily. Muttabi'un. 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 Okay? Ittaba'a yattabi'u ittiba'an muttabi'un. Now, passive. Now, passive starts with a longer U sound in the past tense, right? It's a longer U sound. If I had to break it and write it, in an expanded form, I would say, just like I did with ikta, ukutu, just like I did with ukuturiba. That's if I, if I had to write it that way without the shadda, I would say uktu, that like uktu. Look above, look above here, here where uktu, where we have ukuturiba. Okay, so there's a u on the ta that came with the family. Uktu. You what you're doing is uturiba. Okay, Okuturiba. Then you would do here is Utubia. Utubia. Okay, Utubia. And what I could do, because they are two tas, I could merge them. Could merge them. But the sound I'm producing is Uttu. I'm producing a sound Uttu, isn't it? Uttu sound. It's a Dhamma sound. So I'm going to put a Dhamma and a Shadda. Utubia. Make sense? Yes, understandable? So this is, these are the two, two thas I've merged together. I've merged together these two thas and I'm, I've produced this Shadda sound. I'm producing this Shadda sound. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, put a Shadda and, and also I'm going to put, I'm going to put a Dhamma on it as well. Okay, because the sound I'm producing is a Dhamma sound. Yes, I'm producing a Dhamma sound. Utubia. And this is the form you would find. This is the form, most likely, you would find. Uttubia. Okay. Uttubia. Then you have Yuttabau. Same story here. Yuttabau. In this case, there's a Fatha dominating. Okay. Yuttabau. Uttubia, Yuttabau. And the master remains the same. Ittibaan. And you derive the ism of all based on the passive. You say, Muttabi'un. Muttabi'un. Muttabi'un, sorry, not Tabi'un. Muttabi'un. 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 All right. Okay. Ittaba'a yattabi'u ittiba'an muttabi'un uttubi'a yuttaba'u ittiba'an muttaba'un Okay, now let's construct the command. We're constructing the command for yattabi'u. Constructing the command for yattabi'u. Command for yattabi'u. Okay. The command for yattabu. Yattabu first becomes tattabu in the second person. Okay? That's simple. Then you make it lightest. It becomes tattabu. Okay? Tattabu. Then you remove the ta. Then you remove the ta. Okay? And you say with the Shadda and the Fatha here. Can you read it? Can you read it? Okay. How would you produce two Ta sounds? 
How would you produce two, two ta sounds? There's no sukun. What we know usually, this it ends up in a sukun, so we can't read it. But in this case, in this case, we just can't read it because even if there's no sukun, there's a. It seems like there's a there's a shadda. But in reality, what is this shadda? These are the these are the two tas coming together. See, see, see here. These are two tas coming together. And does the first ta has sukun on it? Yes, it is a sukun. The two ta's merge together. So first ta has a sukun and the second ta has a fatha. So I can't read it because there is a first ta with a sukun on it. Therefore, I will have to give it a helper alif. I will have to give it a helper alif. You understand? Let me say that again. So you could write it, you could write this one like this. You could write this one like, like this. Okay? You could write this one like this, and there's a ta with a sukun. There's a ta with a sukun. Okay? There's a ta with a sukun in the beginning. Therefore, you can't read it. Therefore, you can't read it. So it does require hyper lift. From the visual sense, it may appear as if there's a fatha and there's no sukun, and you may be able to read it, but when you have to produce two ta sounds, how would you produce it two ta sounds when the when the when the shatta comes right in the middle, uh, right in the beginning? How would you do that? You can't, you just can't produce that sound. Yeah, you you'll have to put an helper alif, and when you put a helper alif, then you can do do ittaba, ittabir, ittabir. Then you can do it. Be. Then you're producing two ta sounds. How would I know what is the haraka on the alif? I would go to the second to last root letter, ba. Second to last root letter in the hua form. If it is anything other than dhamma, I would put a kasra. I would put a kasra. So the command is effectively ittabir. Ittabir. Okay. Forbidding, you know, you take the second person letters, it's it tabi. And the ism zarf you can you can deduce directly from the ism of ul, which is the same. Oops. You see that? Muttaba'un. It's a pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. It's not too difficult, right? You just have to be careful when you look at the ta with the shadda. Just you have to analyze and decode it, expand it in your mind. If this is a ta with the shadda, is it something because of the family eight? Okay. Is it because of the family eight? Okay. And inshallah, you get there. You get there, inshallah. Okay. Good. So we have done this. Um, these two, these two sets of root letters. Uh, please, please do the remaining. There's so many root letters here. Please make these self sahih charts. In your own time using these root letters for family eight feel free to use this root letter for other families as well don't worry about if it would make sense as a word or not just con practice constructing the self charts practice constructing the self charts this is your key to understanding self and also going forward with your studies inshallah okay don't give up on this keep on trying okay now Let's move forward. I want to show you uh, a, a special case in the family eight. I want to share with you a special case in family eight. Okay. And that special case is when you have, when you have, uh, let me call it the case of it, the case of the 
the case of it, the Khazar. Okay. So you will remember this as a case of it, the Khazar, inshallah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll take this. Let's move it to the next page. So case of it, the Khazar, I'll empty this table and we'll do some magic here. The case of Ittakhaza. Ittakhaza has root letters, which are, the root letters are Hamza. Now, I know you don't see Hamza here, okay? And I, I know you don't see Hamza in Ittakhaza. Just bear with me. Hamza, Ha, and Zal. Hamza, and Zal. Okay, Ittakhaza has root letters which are Hamza, Ha, and Zal. Okay, and I'm going to go and construct the Sarf Sagir chart for family 8 for these three root letters. Let's see what it comes out with. Let's see what it comes out with. Okay, so family 8 Hamza, Ha, and Zal. Starts with Alif with the Kasra, then there is a first root letter with the Sukun, which is Hamza, and then there is an extra Ta with the Fatha, and then Khaza. Okay? Ita Khaza. Ita Khaza. Now, Ita Khaza is from the face of it, it looks okay, but for Arabs, it's absolutely important that the sound the language produce is smoother, it's easier. The, 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 the pronunciation is smoother and easier. Ittakhaza, Ittakhaza is somewhat uncomfortable. You have to feel that uncomfortableness. Ittakhaza. So what they did, they say, okay, whenever in family eight, the first root letter is, the first root letter is Hamza, when in family eight, the first root letter is Hamza, we're going to merge it with the Ta. Just like we did with Ittaba'a in the previous case. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna replace it by a Ta, not a merge. We, can, we will replace this Hamza by a Ta. Okay? We will replace this Hamza by a Ta. So if they replace this Hamza by a Ta, let's say this Hamza is replaced by a Ta, and then there is Ta Okay, then you have something ittahaza, and when you have ittahaza, you know that two tas coming together, and you can and you can fuse them together. You can merge them together. Okay, ittahaza. You see that? You see that? Ittahaza. Okay. You see, when the Hamza is the first root letter, when the Hamza is the first root letter, okay, you would merge, you would replace that Hamza with the Ta. This Hamza, this Hamza is replaced. This Hamza is replaced with this Ta. Okay? The Hamza is replaced with the Ta. Okay? Let me write this tip here for you. The Hamza is the Hamza is replaced with a ta. Okay? The Hamza is replaced with a ta. That's effectively what I'm telling you. The Hamza is replaced with a ta. And when you replace Hamza with the Ta, as a consequence, you get two Ta's together. You get two Ta's together. And when you get two Ta's together, what do you do? You fuse them together. You merge them. You make them one and put a Shadda on them. Okay? And therefore, you get Itta Khaza. So when you look at Itta Khaza, when you look at Itta Khaza, you know it's family eight, and you know its root letters are Hamza, Ha, and da, Zal, not Ta, Ha, and Zal. Its root letters are Hamza, Ha, and Zal. 
Ittakhaza is a very important word. Word it means to take. It means to take. Ittakhaza means he took. He took. Okay. Yattakhazu he takes. Yattakhazu he takes. So Ittakhaza is used about one twenty-five times in the Quran. It's used about 125 times in the Quran. And it's absolutely important for you to know this word because this is a very widely used word in the Quran. Okay? So when you see ittakhaza, don't get confused. It is family eight, and it is a it is a replacement of Hamza with the ta. Okay? It's a replacement of Hamza with the ta. So let's continue with filling the filling the remaining saf sahib. Ittakhaza yattakhizu. There is no Hamza anywhere. You won't find Hamza anywhere in the entire Surf Sahih chart. Itta Khaza Yatta Khizu. Itta Khaza Yatta Khizu. Itti Khaza. Itti Khaza. Itti Khaza. Okay. Itta Khaza Yatta Khizu. Itti Khaza. Mutahizun. 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 Ittahaza, yettahizu, ittihazen. Mutahizun. Okay. Uttuhiza. Uttuhiza. Understand how this becomes two, right? Or shall I do it? I'm starting with the assumption that the Hamza is replaced by Ata, so it's going to become Ut Tu Khiza Ut Tu Khiza, which fuses the two tasks, the tasks together and it becomes Ut Tu Khiza. Ut Tu Khiza. Okay? So these two tas are fused together. Okay? Uttuhiza. Yuttahazu. Yuttahazu. Uttuhiza, yuttahazu, ittihazan. Ittihazan. Mutakhazun, you derive it from the passive. Mutakhazun. 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 Ittakhaza, yattakhizu, ittikhazan, mutakhizun. Uttukhiza, yuttakhazu, ittikhazan, mutakhazun. Now the command. Let's construct the command quickly. Okay? Command, command for Yattakhizu. Command for Yattakhizu. Yattakhizu. What are you going to do? So we have Yattakhizu. First we do is to take it to the We have yet Tahizu, we first take it to the second person. Tahizu. Tahizu. We make it lighter, so it becomes Tahiz. We remove the Ta, it becomes Tahiz that we can't read. Therefore, we give it a helper Aleph. With the helper alif, the kasra because the second to large root letter in the hua form is a kasra and not a dhamma, it becomes it tafis. And it tafis becomes it tafis. So the command is it tafis. Okay, good me. And there's a forbidding which is la tattafiz. We take the second person lightest. La tattafiz. Tattafiz. 
Tā, tad tā es uts. Tas. And ism zaf is exactly the same as the ism maf'ul. Mutakhizun. Mutakhizun, sorry. Mutakhizun, mutakhizun. I keep on saying that. I just realized. Mutakhizun. But you guys are smart, you know, when I'm making a mistake. Good. Okay. Mutakhizun. All right. Good, alhamdulillah. We've covered quite a lot. So, um, just remember this special case with ittakhaza. It's an important word. It's used about 125 times in Quran. Uh, and it, it means to take and and just just don't confuse yourself if you find it. You'll find it a lot in Surah Gahaf, for example. It's, it, is, it, is, it is coming quite a lot of time in Surah Gahaf. Good, so let's quickly see some Quranic examples before our time runs out. I brought a few for you. Some examples from the Quran. Now let's look at this. In Tasarat. In Tasarat. Wa izal kawakibun Tasarat. Wa izal kawakibun Tasarat. When the stars will get scattered. Okay, they will scatter apart. Okay. Uh, in Tasarat. So when I look at in Tasarat, when I look at in Tasarat, I immediately could say, okay, it is a family seven because it starts with an in. Okay. It starts with an in. It starts with an in and I will construct it with, I will assume the root letters are ta, sa, and ra. Okay. It starts with an in and it starts with uh, ta, sa, and ra. That's how I could see it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's okay. And and your thinking is right. It looks very, very family seven. Looks quite a lot of family seven. Okay. But when you will learn the dictionaries, when you will learn the dictionaries, right now you don't, but when you will learn the dictionaries and you will take the root letters ta, sa, and ra, ta, sa, and ra, and you look up in the dictionaries, you will not find it in family seven. You will not find this in family seven. Okay? You won't find those root letters in family seven. However, you would find other root letters. For example, you say, okay, if it is not in the dictionaries, then probably noon, saw, and raw. Noon, saw, and raw are the root letters. And you will find this word with noon, saw, and raw in the dictionary. Okay? That will tell you, okay, fine, this noon is a root letter. So this alif and ta, this alif and ta, this alif and ta are coming from the family. Alif and ta are coming from the family. And now which family is the family that says it is, it, ha it starts with an alif, there's an extra ta after the first root letter, and they both are separate. Alif and ta are separate. Okay, so you'd say this is family eight. And... What is the last star doing? Rat. Is it Nasarat pattern? Is it Nasarat pattern? Is Nasarat the present tense or a past tense? It's a past tense. Yes. It's a past tense. Okay. Nasarat is a past tense. Okay. So this one is Fi'il Madi. This is Fi'il Madi. Fi'il Madi. Okay, Nasara, Nasara, Nasaru, Nasarat. Nasarat, which pronoun? Where Mazi here? Here. Why here? Why here? Because Al Kawaku, Al Kawakibu, this is a broken plural. This is a broken plural. Kokab is a star, a single star. Kokab means a single star. Al Kawakibu is a plural of a single star, many stars, okay? It is not falling into the Muslim chart, okay? It's not falling into the Muslim chart. It's it's a broken plural, it doesn't follow the pattern. And the broken plural are labeled singular. 
Remember, the broken plurals are labeled singular feminine. If because they are labeled singular feminine, therefore here, because here is a feminine pronoun. Here is a feminine pronoun. So antasarat points has a hidden pronoun which is here that points to al kawakibu. That points to al kawakibu. Okay. Ittabi'u. Okay, ittabi'u. What is this? Ittabi'u. Okay, so is it a present tense or a past tense? I know that there is a ta which is merged. I'm looking at this ta. First thing, I'm looking at this ta. Okay, so I know, I know the ta's could be merged. In the family eight, we can merge the ta. So let's say there's, there's one ta which is a root letter, there's one ta which is a root letter, and then there's a ba, and then there is an ain. Okay. And there's a ba and then there's an ain. This last vowel is, is telling me the pronoun. It's just telling me the pronoun. It's a home form. It's a home form, right? So it's taba'a. It's taba'a. Okay. Now the first alif is coming from the family and then there's a ta. So let's try to construct it. So I say, okay, family eight. It, and the first ta comes, which is the root letter ta, which is sukun. And the second ta comes, which is ta of the family. And it taba. It taba. Okay. Good. So it looks like that. So then I can merge the two tasks together. I can say, okay, it taba. It taba. Okay, fine. I think I'm getting there. Let's see. Let's see. But the, this is a hua form. But I can see in the word, I want to go to the home form. I want to go to the home form. So it taba. I would make a huma form first, just to just so I know I'm going in a sequence. And then whom? Then whom? Okay, cool. Looks like I got it, but wait. But wait, but wait, there's a problem. But wait. I got it the bao. I got it the bao. Okay. This is it the bao. But what I have is it the bo. What I have is it the bo. So there's something fishy going on here. Hmm, okay, so the past tense really did not lead me to this. So what if I make a present tense? What if I make a present tense? I say ittaba'a was the past tense. So yattabi'u, yattabi'u, yattabi'u is the present tense. Okay, now I take yattabi'u to the home form. Yattabi'u, yattabi'ani, yattabi'una. I say yattabi'una. Yat Okay, I bring it to Yatabi Una. Okay, but this is looking completely different from this. Probably it's the lightest form. Why do I make a present tense lightest? Either it is a forbidding or it's a command, isn't it? Or there's a harf before it. I don't see there's a harf that is making it lightest before it. There's no harf that makes it lightest before it. Okay. It, there is no law before it, so it's definitely not a forbidding. But it could potentially be a command. Let's try to construct the command. So let's make let, take the yat tabi'u to the second person. We make it tat tabi'u. Tabi'u. Tat tabi'u. Now let's make it lightest. Tat tabi. Tabi. Ooh, okay, and let's remove the ta. Ta b. Okay, and now we need to give it a helper alif. Ta b. Ta b. Hmm, okay, okay, it looks pretty sim similar to me. I got 
I got the I got the B here. I got the kasra here. It it tabiru, and I also have it tabiru. So this looks like this is a fail amr. Looks like this is a fail amr. This is fail amr. This is the command. It's fail amr. Okay, and this is the fail madi. Fail madi. In this case, this is not applicable. The fail madi is a wrong choice. It is not fail madi. This is fail amr. This is the fail amr we're talking about here. Okay? This fail amr we're talking about here. That's the word. It's the surf of this word is the fail amr. This is command. This is a command. Okay? This is a command. You see the difference? You see the difference? You could immediately map it to the past tense, but then you have to think a bit more closely. No, there's a haraka which is different. There's a haraka which is different, and it's not mapping to the past tense. So probably there's something else. And we and we said yesterday as well, the difference between the command and the past tense is usually just one haraka in the home form. Okay, so it's the command. It's fail amr. Okay, and we have gone through all the process to construct it. Okay. Am tahana. Am tahana. Next one. Am tahana. Okay. So I'm looking at a meme, ha and noon. Okay. Because I know there's an alif which is coming from the family. It's coming from the family. And I know there's a ta in the middle which is also coming from the family. Okay. If I say there's no family that starts with alif and meme, so I can't say um. Is the start no? Uh, so meme has to be one of the root letters. I can't say it's an ism fail, it's a mafool or some file or some zarf because it doesn't start with the meme. Meme it starts with alif. Okay, it starts with alif. So I can't say that. So alif comes from the family, and the families I know alif begins with is family seven. It begins with alif, but there is an immediate noon after it, which is not the case here. So I'll leave it. Then the only the other family that I know begins with Aleph is the family eight. And in family eight, you have Aleph, and then you have a root letter with the sukun, and then you have an extra ta from the family. This maps exactly to the family eight. Okay, it's am tahana. It is a past tense. It is. It is a past tense. Yes, because it can't be a present tense. It's a fail. It's a fail madi. Fail madi. Hua. You with me? Fail madi hua. Is like ik taraba. Like it taba. Am tahana. It's like that. Okay? So you don't see a kasra uh, all the time uh, on the alif if it, if that's confusing you because you know ikataraba there is no im tahana there's just alif that's because of the flow that's because of the flow you can you can remember family eight as a family starting with alif instead of starting with alif with the kasra okay because in the Quran you may not see the kasra all the time okay but the point is that it starts with an alif and there is a ta in the middle uh, after the first root letter. Good. Let's look at this one. Okay. Mukutadirun. Mukutadiruna. Okay. What is Mukutadiru? I see it starts with the meme with the Dhamma. Okay. It starts with the meme with the Dhamma. It's some sort of ism. It's a file or it's a maful. It's, it's a file, it's a maful, or it's a zarf. How would I know if it is in some file, it's a maful, or it's a zarf? I have to look at the haraka. It has a kasra. It has a kasra. Muqtadiru. Muqtadi. Okay? It has a kasra. And meme is not a root letter. You know meme is not a root letter. Meme is not a root letter. Okay? So, so, so the remaining thing, and you also know that una ending, this una ending, 
belongs it belongs to a pronoun it belongs to the pronoun it tells you it's plural it's not part of the word it's just the ending combination yes like muslimuna hafizuna muqtadiruna okay this ruuna is just the ending it can't be root letters okay so you have you have you have wiped off the meme you have my wiped off the una and the things that are remaining are qaf ta dal and ra okay now there are four letters remaining you need to find which letter is not a root letter and you, what you see here is you see there is a qaf and there is a ta okay the sukun on the qaf tells you that this is potentially from the family that has a sukun after the first uh, 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 as of on the first root letter because it, it be, it, and the meme in the beginning tells you it's one of the isms and from the kasra you know kasra on the dal you know it's ism file so the fam the, the family that brings a meme in the ism file and and a sakoon of on the first root letter after it muk and then there is a ta which is an extra ta is family eight Okay, you map it completely to the family eight. Oh, this this ta is also something coming out of the family, not really. So if you then you assume, okay, there's there's a qaf, dal, and ra. So if you take these two letters, qaf, dal, and ra, qadar, and you try to construct this family eight, you say it qadar, say it qadar. And as soon as you have yaktadiru, let's try to construct the ism file. Moktadirun. 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 Okay, moktadirun. What is the plural of moktadirun? You see that? Moktadiruna. You see? Moktadiruna. You see how we went there? How we decoded the root letters and then we tried to deduce which family it belongs to. So this is effectively ism file. This is some file of family eight. Some file of family eight. Okay, this is a some file of family eight. Good, Alhamdulillah. Good, Marshall. We have covered quite a lot today again, um, and I hope it was it was uh, easy to follow for you. Uh, I'm doing my best to just go with a normal pace if you do if you do feel that this pace is a bit fast uh probably either tell me or please review the recordings because probably that's something uh we you need to work on um please uh keep on revising this please do construct these charts if you don't construct these charts you'll find it difficult when you read the quran try to find the words that are mapping to the families Okay, try to find the words okay without finding the words without finding the words uh you will not get that practice so when you open the quran and when you're reading it read it slower so you know so you know that uh, you want to find some word read it with an intention that whenever i see a word as soon as i see a word starting with a meme for example uh, and it looks like an ism to me i want to see which family it belongs to is it any of the families from two to eight if you can't find it, if you can't decode it, that's fine. Probably that's something you have not learned yet. Or uh, you still need a bit more. Start tuning your brain in a way that when you read the Quran, you decode it at the same time. Okay, you decode it at the same time. You're not just reading anymore. You're connecting. You're connecting with the book. You're trying to understand what that book really means. Deep dive the wisdom behind it. Slowly, slowly, you're getting there. Okay, so, so keep high, inshallah, and um, don't give up. I will send these notes. 
how, how would I send these nodes? I would just upload them on the drive, okay? You will have these through the drive. The All the recordings will be made available as usual. And inshallah, I will see you next week. And inshallah, by that time, I hope you will get a time to just digest everything that we have done today. In the next class, we will continue with the surf families. Inshallah, okay? So I wish you a very wonderful week going forward and a very, very nice remaining weekend. Sunny weather like this. Inshallah, remember me and all of us in your prayers. Inshallah, uh, may Allah help and make things easy for us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.